Dear students, today we are going to discuss a very important topic in physics but has lot of relevance in engineering. Many a times you will be wondering why we are studying modern physics, Bohr's theory, interaction between atom and radiation, forces playing inside the atom. You may be wondering why are we being taught all these concepts. Today you will see a wonderful justification. Atoms, study of atoms, properties of atoms have given engineers a very important tool. Today if you ask me, what is the technique by which large amount of data is being transmitted? Optical fiber communication. And in the optical fiber, it is laser which carries the information. If you ask me, what is that tool that is being used by doctors for surgeries, eye surgery? laparoscopic surgery, laser. What is the device that is used in garment factories for precise cutting? Laser. Laser aided cutting tools, welding tools, drilling tools. Laser light is used in interferometers for finding distance between galaxies. Why laser is used in all these applications? Laser is produced by atoms. How is, how, how, how is laser light emitted from atoms? How in what way laser light is different from normal light from an incandescent bulb? If you look at sunlight or incandescent light from an incandescent bulb, the waves that are emitted would be like this. With the time, if you plot the graph of intensity, one wave would be like this, another wave would be like this, another wave would be like this, another wave would be like this. Be like this. When you see them, you will see these waves are not connected at all. They look like individual isolated waves. There is no connectivity amongst them. Lack of this connectivity is incoherence. Ordinary light is incoherence because the waves released from the atoms of the source are not in phase. So such a light is said to be incoherent. Waves are not in phase or there is no connectivity amongst these waves. But laser radiation produced by ampli laser light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation is coherent, is monochromatic, is highly intense, is unidirectional. Today, if laser has lot of engineering applications, it is because of these four important qualities. One, laser light is coherent means the light waves that are emitted from laser would look like this. See this? They appear as if all the waves are propagating together in phase. It appears as if all the waves are connected. Right? There is a connectivity here. This is called as coherence. There is one wavelength, monochromatic light. High intensity. What do I mean by this? High intensity means 1 megawatt per millimeter square area. You understand what I am saying? Intensity of the order of megawatts per millimeter square can be produced. That is the light intensity which is used in CO2, in carbon dioxide laser for cutting tools. Then directionality, it is directional. For example, I will show you a laser torch. See, this is the toy laser. Never look at this directly. It can cause harm to the retina. See this? This laser light produces unidirectional focused image. Instead of this, suppose if you turn on an ordinary torch, you will see huge illumination on the wall. Correct? So that light is diverging. It is not coherent. But laser light is focused on into a point. So these qualities make laser and today laser products in the market have a market share of few billion dollars. Be it a DVD in which lot of data is stored. How, do you, how is data written and read on a DVD through laser light. Correct? How is atmospheric pollution measured 
through a device called as lidar which uses light so today laser has lot of engineering applications and you have got to study it so how is such a light a light of these qualities produced what are the processes taking place what are the requisites of a laser system what do you require suppose tomorrow i want to make a laser unit what are the important things i need what conditions are to be sustained it is these things which we are going to discuss now and the whole idea is built on a very important discovery made by einstein in 1970 in 1970 einstein published a paper which dealt with a concept called as metastable states light emission from atoms possessing metastable states so einstein proposed an idea in his phenomenal paper in 1970 so lasers are a result of that principle right so we are going to understand the properties of laser so what are the requisites of laser source how do we produce it so a laser system requisites of laser system right Les light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation i am going to explain what is stimulated emission what is spontaneous emission for example light from sun light from incandescent bulb they are all spontaneous emission incoherent light whereas what is stimulated emission emission caused by stimulation that is the principle of laser so what are the uh, requisites of a laser first thing what we need in a laser is active medium a laser source must have a material which emits light a material which has certain type of atoms which under some conditions emit stimulated emission can i take for example oxygen as oxygen atoms hydrogen atoms nitrogen atoms carbon dioxide carbon monoxide ammonia water what is that material which is which can be used to produce laser light why do we say helium neon laser ruby laser semiconductor gallium arsenide laser co2 laser ammonia laser not every material can emit laser light it should have certain qualities first thing an active medium a material to become to qualify to become an active medium must readily absorb energy the atoms must have energy states which facilitate absorption of energy the energy can be in the form of radiation chemical energy electrical energy but are these atoms in this material readily absorb energy if they don't absorb energy then it is difficult to excite the atoms to higher level and then cause stimulated emission correct in a laser source the first process that happens is optical pumping pumping of atoms from the ground state to metastable state next is sending a photon of exactly same energy as though as those atoms and triggering the de excitation right that is stimulated emission so to to make that process happen the first thing is an active medium consisting of atoms which readily absorb energy second point that is important is active medium must possess metastable states what are metastable states metastable states are not like any other excited states we all know atoms possess exact uh, different energy levels electrons are revolving in different orbits correct and all those orbits are not metastable states it they are those states those orbits those energy levels where lifetime is relatively higher in a normal excited state if an electron is excited to a level then it stays there for few nanoseconds picoseconds 10 power minus 9 seconds but metastable states have a lifetime of very important notice this 
few milliseconds quite high the lifetime of free electrons the electrons in those states is very high now why is this this is a very very interesting point which you must uh, think of how can these levels be detected in the first case how to know that this material has metastable states and why do they have high lifetime so one has to apply eisenberg uncertain principle schrodinger's equation quantum mechanical theories to understand to identify a suitable active medium all materials cannot have cannot be active medium for example carbon dioxide laser carbon dioxide is a good active medium helium neon is an active medium but not oxygen how is this possible so it depends on these qualities correct second thing you require is very important what is known as resonance cavity see here this is very important for amplification of radiation what is resonant cavity a resonant cavity has see this it consists of two mirrors separated by a certain distance this mirror for example is partially silvered this mirror is fully silvered right if the separation between them is l if this is equal to integer multiple of half the wavelength then if you send this radiation of this wavelength lambda then the light ray that is propagating from this plate to this plate and that is reflected from this plate these two undergo constructive interference such that these points become nodes and you will have maximum intense radiation is it clear a resonant cavity in the case of laser is it consists it comprises two reflecting plates separated by a distance integer multiple of of the wavelength of light that is being amplified suppose if you say if this condition is not satisfied then you know what as the rays propagate between these plates they undergo destructive interference and no amplification occurring is it clear so please think of this how is this happening one point i would like to highlight is when this condition is maintained these points act as nodes you know nodes and anti nodes suppose if a string is connected between two points is plugged at the center it produces waves like this right these points are called as nodes where amplitude is minimum whereas here amplitude is maximum so in this resonant cavity here amplitude is maximum maximum ampli amplification is happening as the ray undergoes multiple reflection that amplified light comes out so a resonant cavity is very important now third uh, requisite for a laser is a suitable energy device a suitable pumping device to pump atoms from ground state to excited state when when our atoms emitting radiation when electrons make a transition from higher level to lower level how do you push electrons from ground state to higher level you need an energy source it can be a light source it can be electrical energy it can be thermal energy it can be chemical energy but you need a light energy source this process of pumping electrons from ground state to metastable state is called as optical pumping exciting electrons atoms from ground state to excited state so these three are very very important requisites of a laser now if you have all these three now what is the condition that has to be sustained to produce laser light these are like hardware requirement correct to make a laser you need an active medium let us say i have taken carbon dioxide it is a good active medium or helium and neon or ruby laser aluminum oxide i have resonant cavity two mirrors separated by some distance a discharge tube okay next i have a source an electrical voltage source which can give us 3000 volt 
So I have all these hardware requirements. So now what is that condition that has to be created to produce laser light? So we'll discuss that. These are called as lasing conditions. Right? What is lasing condition? What are lasing conditions? The conditions under, under which laser light, an intense beam, a coherent light, a monochromatic light, a unidirectional light is produced. Under what conditions? The most important condition that has to be maintained to have laser is the first thing. See here, population inversion. We must achieve this condition. What is population inversion? In, in the case of atoms, we all know under normal temperature, we have more atoms in the ground state. So, populations of atoms is more in the ground state under normal condition. Right? Now, suppose if you supply energy, what happens? Atoms absorb energy, they get excited to higher level. Right? This process of exciting atoms to higher level is called as optical pumping. We are supplying energy to these atoms and pushing them to higher level. Now, when they go to higher level, what happens now? The population. Earlier, population of atoms in the ground state was quite high. Now, that condition has now inverted. Atoms in the excited state are more than atoms in the ground state. This inverse of situation, inverse of population is called as population inversion. It is a condition in which number of atoms in the excited state is high. Under normal condition, ground state possesses more atoms. Correct? Now, how does it occur? Pop optical pumping. Right? You have an energy source which supplies energy to these atoms in the ground state to pump. Now, I have atoms here. Okay? And this level is called as metastable state. Now, and there are more number of atoms grouped here. How is laser beam produced? If these atoms that are in the excited state allowed for themselves, they will get randomly de-excited and produce incoherent light. Spontaneous emission will occur. If, an, if electrons or if an atoms are excited, what, what will happen? They stay there for some time and get randomly de-excited. That is known as spontaneous emission. They emit light that is not coherent, that is out of phase. There is no connectivity. So now, when population inversion is achieved, then we have to make sure sp spontaneous decay is avoided and a, an another process called as stimulated emission is triggered. What is that stimulated emission? This is the third condition which we have to create. Stimulated emission means a process in which we send a photon of same energy as energy of these atoms, excited atoms. What is the energy of these excited atoms? If this is E1, if this is E2, energy of these atoms is E2 minus E1. So now, if we send a suitable photon here, whose energy is E2 minus E1, which is, as, which is having same phase as these atoms. So it is not just energy. The photon must be in phase. That photon will interact with these atoms. Now, two important questions. You may say the atoms may absorb this photon and go to next level. Can it happen? Then no laser light. No, we say such things should, should not be allowed to happen. How can we avoid such cases? We, while selecting the active medium, we must ensure those atoms do not possess nearby energy levels close to Fermi level. That is when an active medium is decided. So we cannot take all materials to produce laser light, only certain materials can become qualified to become active medium because they must have metastable states and no nearby energy levels. So this photon will not be successful in exciting them to next level. 
as there are no vacant energy states or no energy levels nearby. Instead, the electromagnetic field of this photon interacts with this and a condition called as resonance occurs. What is resonance? Two objects of same phase, same frequency, vibrating at same frequency, right? So, the atoms have some energy and the photon that is being sent by external agency has same energy, same phase. They interact and most of the times decay of atoms occurs. All the atoms decay at the same instant producing coherent light. Correct? See this? All the atoms. There is no randomness involved here. No spontaneous emission. The decay is happening because of the trigger of this photon. This is called as stimulated emission. The emission caused by stimulation of stimulation emission caused by sending a photon. This is stimulated, right? Triggering a de-excitation. External photon is used to trigger the de-excitation. This process of producing coherent light by the decay of atoms caused by an external photon. So this light is called as laser light. So, for, la for laser beam to be produced, population inversion must be achieved. So, here I wish to present an expression. Number of atoms in the ground state, so number of atoms in the excited state are given by Maxwell-Boltzmann law. N ground by N excited is equal to E power Hc by lambda kT. So, it is related to temperature. You understand the ratio of number of atoms in the ground state to excited state is given by this formula. Population inversion means number of atoms in the excited, should, excited state should be very high. Correct? That is achieved by optical pumping. Now, sending an external photon of same energy, same frequency, same phase will trigger de-excitation causing laser beam, coherent light of radiation. So, this is how laser is produced. Now, Einstein gave a mathematical formula which clearly explains under what condition amplification occurs. Under what condition we can sustain this laser emission. Right? So this mathematical process, we call it expression for Einstein coefficients. So we will now discuss a very important derivation which is asked so many times in the exam, the expression for Einstein coefficients. This expression will tell us under what condition stimulated emission is dominating, under what condition spontaneous emission dominates, how to suppress spontaneous emission. Expression for Einstein coefficients. Okay. This expression will tell us under what conditions stimulated emission will dominate. Right? So now it's a very easy derivation. We use black body concepts. We use Planck's law. We use formula for population inversion, Maxwell-Boltzmann law. And just the concept of thermal equilibrium. Okay? Very, very easy derivation. So now look at the basic laser process. The first processing laser is we have active medium atoms in the ground state. Now use optical pumping process make that supply energy to these atoms excite them to higher level. Correct? So this situation of population, high population in the ground state is inverse now because of optical pumping. So op pop population inversion achieved. Correct? So, what has happened now? This process is induced absorption. Atoms are absorbing energy from external source. We have to supply energy E lambda. So, now if I write an expression here, rate of absorption of energy or rate of induced absorption or probability of induced absorption correct energy is being absorbed by the atoms so how much energy are they absorbing 
we know it is definitely it is proportional to number of atoms in the ground state correct if there are n1 here and n2 here the number of atoms in the ground state are absorbing so it is proportional to n and also it is proportional to energy you are some sub, sub, energy density which you are supplying i call it e lambda correct from external source we are supplying energy so rate of absorption is proportional to this so now what i do is see here rate of absorption from ground state to excited state r12 i remove this proportionality constant introduce an expression a term called as a12 which is known as einstein coefficient of induced absorption into n1 e lambda okay so r12 the rate of absorption of energy is proportional to n1 and e lambda so if you remove this proportionality sign by introducing a constant called as einstein coefficient of induced absorption it is a measure of extent to which absorption is happening so this is first expression you must remember correct now atoms are here what can happen now if they are allowed to themselves randomly they deexcite and produce spontaneous emission that light is incoherent that light will not be useful to us suppose if that happens let us say then what is the rate of spontaneous emission that spontaneous emission does not depend on any external agency right we are not supplying any photon it is it just depends on number of atoms in the excited state so the first process is rate of absorption now second process rate of spontaneous emission which will always happen if the system is not disturbed correct if just from the atoms there they go to excited state and they get deexcited randomly spontaneous emission will occur is proportional to what just number of atoms in the excited state correct there is no external energy involved no photon 